Today's headline is Coining Money at the Mint. It says, Silver is sent from the assay office to the Philadelphia Mint Pure, or .999 fine, which is about as pure as silver can be. It's sent in large bars, and when received at the mint, is melted and alloyed with copper. Coin silver is .900 fine. After being melted and alloyed, the metal is cast into ingots, which are simply bars of a convenient size for handling. The metal is then assayed to determine whether it's exactly of the standard fineness. Assaying is done by what is known as the dry or humid process. Samples for assay are taken while the silver is in a fused condition, and two assays are made of every specimen. The silver ingots then go to the coiner. They are first rolled into strips, and as the rolling process is apt to make the metal brittle, it is annealed to soften it. Silver is annealed simply by heating in an open wood fire, and then being allowed to cool gradually. The silver dollar strips are passed through the rolls 9 or 10 times before the first annealing, and 4 or 5 times afterward. Then the process of annealing is repeated. After the last annealing, the strips are run through cutters, which divide them into drafts of the proper thickness for the coins, and these, in their turn, are run through a steam punching machine, which cuts planchets the proper size for the coin. From 160 to 240 are cut in a minute. As the metal gets greasy during this process, the planchets are then dipped into a bath of diluted sulfuric acid, which is too weak to act upon the surface, but effectively removes all foreign matter. The planchets are then adjusted, that is to say, they are carefully weighed, and all that are lacking in weight are cast aside. Such pieces are called lights, and the heavies are the pieces which weigh too much and are filed off. The adjusting is done by women. It is a process which requires much delicacy, and scales are used which are sensitive to 1 64th of a grain. After the annealing is finished, the next operation is the milling, which is done with a curious sort of machine. The edges of the coins are thrown up and grooved by this process. After another cleaning with sulfuric acid, the coins are ready for the dye. The stamping is done on a screw press, and both sides of the coins are stamped at the same time. The dies are cylindrical blocks of steel, upon which are carved the designs to be transferred by pressure to the coins. Art of a high order, as well as fine mechanism, is conspicuous in this part of the coining process. The designer, in the case of the new silver dollar, Mr. Morgan, first draws his design on paper, from which is made a model in wax, of which a plaster cast is taken. And from this cast, an electrotype is taken, upon which careful revision is made with the graver. The electrotype, like the model and cast which preceded it, is three or four times larger than the impression which appears on the dollar. The design is transferred to a steel die by using Hill's reducing machine, constructed on the principle of the photograph. One arm of this instrument, with a blunt point, follows the image on the electrotype, while the other arm, by which is attached a strong and rapidly revolving drill, reproduces the same image on a smaller scale upon a steel block. By means of a press, this impression is transferred to another block, an intaglio, and thence upon another block, which is the parent die. After each transfer, the lines are carefully improved with a graver. Steel of the same quality as that which the parent die is made of is used for the coining dies. They are annealed and trued on both ends. Two or three blows in the screw press, which is worked with a large wheel, secures a perfect impression, and both the obverse and reverse of a coin are struck at once. Machinery places the planchets between the dies and afterward drops the completed coin in a box. Two or three pieces of each coin are reserved for the annual government assay. The processes of melting, refining, and assaying gold and silver are carried on in the assay office in this city on quite as large a scale as at the Philadelphia Mint. Not only government work is done here, but large deposits are made daily of gold and silver bullion by private individuals. Gold is always found alloyed with silver, and it is never found with any other alloy. To separate the silver from the gold, the bullion is boiled in sulfuric acid, which removes the alloy. The gold is then reboiled and reduced to a coarse powder resembling clay. Its purity, then, is 0.998 or 0.999. The silver, mixed with copper, is run into vats on a lower floor and is purified and granulated when it resembles pipe clay. The granulated gold and silver are pressed into large cheeses in a hydraulic press. A cheese of gold, 12 inches in diameter and 3 inches thick, is worth $20,000. A silver cheese of the same size is worth $900.
The sulfuric acid, after it is used, produces a sediment of blue vitriol, which is much prettier than either the gold or the silver seen in the assay office. The vitriol and the weak acid are both sold for as much money as the original acid costs. The substitution of sulfuric acid for nitric has caused a saving to the New York assay office alone of $100,000 a year. Depositors receive their gold and silver separately at standard purity, 0.900. Pure metal is also sent to the assay office from the various refineries to be alloyed. From United States refineries, silver is generally sent in large bars or cakes, and a small amount of Mexican metal is received in thin, irregularly shaped pieces called discs. The fumes from the vats and furnaces in the assay office are condensed and sold as weak acid. Only a small amount of the gas escapes into the atmosphere, and although it's slightly offensive, it's not injurious. On the contrary, this gas is an excellent disinfectant and acts upon dead matter rather than living. The same precautions are taken to prevent loss in the assay office as in the gray mints. The ashes, the sweepings from the floor, the crucibles, and all the instruments which come into contact with the precious metals are washed and ground in a machine constructed for the purpose, and the stray particles of silver and gold are gathered together. This article originally came from the New York Times. This story came from the great state of Iowa, being reported in the Toledo Chronicle of April 4th, 1878. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to continue to uncover all of America's lost and forgotten history, then remember before you leave to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and remember to like and comment below. And we will see you next time on Americana Archives.